this last um, video that we have for this unit, for the actually not for this unit, for, for this lesson, um, is just doing one problem where you're going to analyze a function, graph it, and give talk about the key features. The handouts that are on the website, I have four of these. I'm only doing one on the video. The other three, I'll have the answers posted for you to look at it as you need to. So as you're doing your homework, you can refer back to them. So for this problem, we want to look at the key features. And some of the key features are, first of all, what's the parent function? And we can see that in this that this is a polyam of fourth degree. So it's a fourth degree, um, also known as quartic. Um, it's, it's okay if you don't have all these names down the, what they are, but fourth degree is important, meaning the parent function is y equals x to the fourth, okay? But the leading term coefficient, the leading term has a coefficient of negative one, which means we know it's going to have a uh, idea of, of a kind of upside down W. That's what we're, we're thinking of. So that's the first thing is to recognize that what's the parent function and kind of what what is it looking like. Because of that, its end behavior is that as we look, as X goes to negative infinity, as we look to the left, we can see that the function is approaching negative infinity. It's going down. And as X is approaching the right, positive infinity, the function is going also down negative infinity okay so in both cases it's going down I should say you know so you can see that it's going down on both ends so that's the end behavior the domain because it's a polynomial is X it belongs it's X belongs to that's kind of a oops, it's an epsilon but uh, belongs to the set of all real numbers if it just wrote all real numbers is fine the range Hmm, the range. Well, there's a maximum value for this. It does not go all the way down and all the way up. So we know that it's going to be below. We know that our y's are going to be less than or equal to some value. And that value is going to be the relative maximum in this problem. Actually, it would be called the absolute maximum because it's the highest it ever gets. And this we have yet to figure out. So we're going to leave that as a blank right now. We also need to find its zeros, and um, and, all, and we're looking at this and saying, well, this is not that easy to factor. We could factor out a negative x, and if we do, we end up with x cubed plus 9x squared plus 24x plus 16, and this is, once again, something that is very, very challenging to factor. I mean, it does factor. But this would require more than where we are reviewing at this point. So instead of going to that level, we just say, okay, let's let's pull out our calculator now. We've we maybe have exhausted some of the information without a calculator at this point. So we plug in the original function. I plug in exactly what it was typed there, the negative x to the fourth, making sure I'm using the correct, you know, that's a negative symbol, not a subtraction symbol. Then that's a subtraction. So I plugged all that in. We then graph it, and then we look at that, and we can see from our graph, we can see some things going on. We say, ooh, there's a zero right here. And if we weren't sure if that was a zero, again, the second calc does have a feature called zero. And we can double check that it is a zero. And in fact, it is. That this is a zero, and not only is it a zero, but it bounces at that zero, which means there is a zero um, at uh, negative four. And so we have zeros where x equals negative 4, and it's a multiplicity 2. There's going to be two of them, which means I know that this is going to be negative x times, since there's 2 x minus 4, x plus 4 and x plus 4 are factors of that polynomial because there are two zeros at negative four. And we also have in our graph, we look at this, we can see, oh, there's another zero. There's a zero at uh, negative one, and there's a zero at zero. So we have an x equals, uh, x equals one, and multiplicity of one, and x equals zero multiplicity of one, which means x, uh, if it's, oh, it's not x, equals one, x equals negative one. 
okay? Which means x plus 1 and x, oh, and we already have the x, don't need anything more. Um, this one here for the x equals 0. And this is the factorization of that problem because we found our zeros. So we found our factorization by finding our zeros. And we did our zeros by looking at the graph right now. The next couple things we need to do is we need to look at um, the, we have a relative maximum at that zero. So we're gonna say, where are our relative maximums? Well, one of our relative maximums is at that zero, negative four, zero. The other relative maximum is right here. So we're gonna use our calculator, second calc, relative maximum is four. I'm gonna bring it over to, oops, wrong direction, to the left of that maximum, and then to the right of that maximum, and somewhere near that maximum. And we find out that the other maximum is at uh, negative, and it says, uh, negative 0 0.43 and it goes all the way up to 3.12. This is not only the relative maximum but this one is called our absolute max. It's the highest that, that function ever gets. Since that's the highest our function ever gets, it's 3.12 then this 3.12 is the maximum for our range. That our range has to, all of our points are below or equal to 3.12. We need to find our relative minimum. And if we look at our graph, well, we have one relative minimum right here. So we're gonna go second, calc, relative minimum is three. Bring it over to the left of it to the right of it, right as close as we can, and we find that our relative minimum uh, is at uh, negative 2.32, comma, all the way down to negative 8.64, okay? And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna sketch that stuff and then we'll talk about the last two things, which is intervals of increase and intervals, oops, it's right, intervals of decrease. And so first of all, let's graph all these points that we have here. So we have a zero at negative four, one, two, three, four, and there's two of them there, that's okay. We have a zero at negative one, we have a zero at zero. We have a um, relative maximum is here, relative maximum is in between these two zeros. We go up to three, one, two, three point one, two. Somewhere right around there is my relative maximum. I have a relative minimum at negative two, uh, 1, 2.32, all the way down to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8.6, so a little bit more than halfway, right about there. We're just kind of eyeballing the, you know, the idea of it. And there is one more nice easy point we could plug into our calculator, which is at negative 3, and at negative 3 it goes down to negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there which helps us just to get an idea that um, we're gonna go up, we're gonna bounce, come down, our minimum, our zero, our maximum, our zero, and then we come back down and we just go down. And that's the general idea of the graph. So our intervals of increase, well it increases here and here, so from negative infinity, because we're talking about the x values, negative infinity all the way to this x value, it's increasing. So negative infinity all the way to negative four, it's increasing. Union symbol, it's increasing from this minimum, negative 8.64, all the way up to this maximum, which is 3.12, 
those are our two intervals of increase. We have two intervals of decrease from the maximum of negative 4 down to this minimum 3.12 or that union symbols or the word or or the interval from this maximum the maximum here is whoops I have my minimum wrong bit I'm sorry this should have been negative 8 point six four I'm sorry negative eight point six four and then we because we went from negative um, four on the x-axis all the way no I did that I just did that wrong again I'm sorry I put my white out I'm supposed to be looking at the x values and I looked at the y value did exactly what I'm not supposed to do you look at the x the inputs so from negative four and then to this minimum the minimum is the x value is negative 2.32 and then it's also from this x value which um, is from negative oh, I did it again sorry the x value is negative 0 0.43 all the way, and we're going all the way to positive infinity. Okay, because we're talking about the x values, and I see also my interval of increase. This one is also incorrect. I did both of my y values, and I should not have been doing my y values. You're supposed to be doing your x values only. The interval of increase from this minimum. The minimum x value is negative, that's why I was looking at these other numbers, negative 2.32 all the way to this x value, which is negative 0 0.43. Okay, so these are from this x to this x, or from this x to this x. Those are the intervals of increase. And then these are the intervals of decrease, again, from x equals negative 4 to x equals negative 2.32. This function is decreasing from x equals a negative 0 0.43 all the way to whatever positive infinity number you plug into the function, it's going to be decreasing. And those are the an, an, analyzing a function and all of the key features.